Today we're going to finish our study on piecewise functions by looking a little more closely again at some application of piecewise functions. Now you may recall a couple days ago that we uh, actually did an application. Uh, we started with an application dealing with parking. Remember how the first uh, uh, four hours uh, were uh, described using a uh, certain rate and then uh, the remaining five hours used a different rate and we could sketch that graph we kind of represent that graph with like two different uh, sloped lines uh, where again we had uh, a particular rate uh, for the first few hours and then the rate uh, a, a smaller rate uh, for the remaining hours which would be represented by uh, a line that wasn't as steep um, again, classic example of piecewise functions where we're putting together two different types of lines. Well, let's let's kind of look at that idea again. We'll look at it with a, a different problem um, here uh, with a zoo admission. Now, as you can see, it looks like uh, the zoo is charging uh, based on uh, the size of the group. It looks like if we have fewer than 50 people, uh, then it's going to be a $40 per person charge. Uh, but then groups of 50 or more, uh, it looks like we're going to have a $30 charge. Um, these sound a lot like uh, rates, uh, different rates, which again, we can describe with a piecewise function. Let's do that. We'll describe uh, the cost. Actually, uh, we can say cost equals, and then go ahead with our piecewise function. So, um, fewer than 50 people it's going to be a 40 dollars per person charge well that that can very easily be represented by by the equation 40x again 40 dollars per person uh, but this is only when the persons when the groups are less than 50 and so we can even create our little uh, restriction with that so what's your other equation going to look like it's not too complicated right uh, it's just the rate, uh, of course, the rate is $30 per person per X, but this would be for greater than or equal to 50 people in a group. And we have our two um, uh, equations for, of course, our piecewise function. Now, if we wanna graph these piecewise functions, um, we're going to need to uh, prepare a little bit here, this graphing grid. Uh, so let's just spend a moment doing that. It's just kind of something we have to do. I'm going to suggest that the x-axis go by fives, uh, but then I can mark every other uh, block uh, using 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, uh, et cetera. I believe I'll get to 70. And again, these would represent x. These would represent the people. And then I'm going to suggest that your y-axis blocks go by $250, so we can label every other one with a simple 500, then 1,000, 1,500, 2,000, and uh, how far are we going to get? We'll get up pretty close to uh, 3,000. Uh, we can stop there. That should be fine. So we have our X and our Y axis. Maybe we even want to sort of bolden those up a little bit um, so that that stands out. Now, when it comes to graphing a line, um, we've talked about this a lot. We want to make sure that we get the idea. Uh, we definitely can use the slope and the y-intercept of, of our first equation, um, except uh, I don't know how easily we're going to be able to rise 40 and run 1. You know, it's going to be hard to go 40 over 1. So instead, let's use the y-intercept as a, a big help. Uh, of course, the y-intercept is 0. Um, we can kind of use that as our first point of contact here. But how about the concept uh, that we've been trying to uh, emphasize of plugging in? Plugging in your endpoint. Yes, if you plug in 50, you end up getting 2,000. You end up getting the uh, literally the endpoint that goes with this first line. Again, 50, 2,000, and I can mark that. Uh, now that I have my graph nice and uh, prepared, um, there we go. And as I always want you to do, I want you to label that point, even though uh, we can kind of see it uh, with the 
uh, with the grid. I still want you to label it because I want to know that you found it. And now, if I connect the dots, then uh, I have my first line, my first piece of that line, of course, um, because it only goes between x equals 0 and x equals 50, comma, 2,000. Well, that was kind of easy. I didn't have to get too concerned about, uh, the again, the, the y-intercept, uh, or excuse me, uh, getting so specific with the slope. But I, I do want to make sure that I have an open circle here. So we'll open that up, uh, or, or better yet, just circle it, uh, because it's not equal to 50. Well, how about our other equation? Our other equation um, is going to uh, need a starting point. And how do we get a starting point? That's right, we plug in x. Or we, we can plug in 50 for x, and that's going to very clearly give us 1,500. Uh, oh, okay, so the point 50, 1,500, is going to be uh, my starting point for my uh, second equation. Now, the slope is 30, but again, it's going to be very hard to go up 30 and over 1. So uh, instead, I honestly could find uh, any other point that I want. Um, perhaps I, I want to just find the point that matches with 70. Um, you know, because there could be 70 people in the group. We'll plug in 70, and we'll get the uh, corresponding uh, y value, which does come out to be uh, 2100. Now, 2100 uh, isn't an exact number on my graph, but I can get pretty close to it. It's just going to be a little bit above 2,000, right? And I've got myself two points, in eight, which enables me to draw my uh, second piece. We know that the piece will go on forever, so we'll just put a little arrow on the end of that. But I do want you to label. Uh, I should have labeled this already, but I want you to label your starting point, as always. So there's 500, 1,500. Well, you can see real clearly that we have two different graphs, uh, each with a different slope, um, and uh, each corresponding to being less than 50 or greater than or equal to 50. So what about question C? How much money will a group of 49 people save if they can just recruit one more member? Now, this is a little question about plugging in 49, quite frankly. And so uh, if I plug in 49, um, and also plugging in 50, what I can do is I can basically compare these two uh, values. So we're going to plug in 49. Of course, when you plug it in, you want to plug it into the equation that uh, matches with 49. And I think we know that 49 is a number that's less than 50. So we'll plug it into our 40x equation. Of course, that's nothing more than 40 times 49. And uh, that's going to be... 1960 bucks. So that's how much it's going to cost for uh, that group of 49. But when I plug in the 50, I want to plug into the equation that matches with 50. Of course, 50 is a number that's greater than or equal to 50, so I'm going to plug it into my 30x equation. And basically, we're just going to multiply by 50. And if we just get one more person, we're actually going to only have to pay $1,500 for that group. How much did we save? A simple subtraction tells you that you saved 460 bucks. So we can plug in 49, but we have to plug it into the blue equation, and we can plug in 50. Uh, thankfully, we get to plug that into the red equation, and that ends up giving us, uh, uh, again, a nice savings. Let's look at another piecewise application. After we look at this, uh, then you will be uh, set to uh, work on the other two that are on the back of the paper. Uh, but let's take a look at triathlon. Triathlon. This one's a little bit different, um, but we'll work through it. And you'll find out that uh, in the end, it still matches with the concepts that we've been learning with piecewise functions. So we've got a 15 and a half mile triathlon. She swims a half a mile in 30 minutes. Um, she swims a half mile in 30 minutes, bikes 
12 miles in an hour and then runs three miles in 30 minutes. So it's definitely got that feel of like a piecewise function, uh, mainly because there's different, um, oh, there's different rates going on here. Uh, although they're not given, uh, clearly there's different rates if we're swimming uh, different distances based on different times. Let me, let me kind of help you to organize that a little bit. That's actually what this chart's all about here. So for the swimming uh, situation, uh, what happens here? She swims uh, in a half hour. She swims um, a, uh, oh, she swims a half mile. Okay, I was getting a little confused because we used the number half twice. So yeah, in a half an hour, which is 30 minutes, she swims a half a mile. So how fast was she going? Now, if we just do a little bit of basic thinking there, if she did a half mile in a half an hour, then she's going at a rate of one mile per hour. Uh, honestly, we just kind of thought about that using some basic uh, thinking about distances and times. So what, what's going on here with the biking? Uh, she, she biked 12 miles, right, in an hour. Wait, 12 miles in an hour, she went... 12 miles per hour. Okay, so clearly that was a lot faster. And of course, usually you do go faster when you're uh, biking. How about the last one? Um, I need a different color here. Uh, what color do we want to pick? I highlighted it in yellow, but I'm going to go ahead with uh, like a, a green. She uh, went three miles. She ran three miles in a half an hour. Now, this one may require a little bit of, of uh, extra thinking, uh, perhaps over here on the side. Basically, distance equals rate times time. She went three miles in a half an hour. Uh, we'll use 0.5 there. If you divide both sides by 0.5, yeah, you're going to end up with 6. You're going to end up with a uh, rate of 6 miles per hour. And we'll squeeze that into the chart here. So you're going to find out that we're going to use these uh, rates uh, that we found in our chart when it comes time to work with the piecewise function. But let's let's do one more piece of organizing. Let's think about the intervals uh, for each of these. Now, the swimming interval was between 0 and 30 minutes, or 0 and a half an hour. So we got that one. Um, but what we want to realize is that the biking interval uh, picked up where the swimming interval left off. So that means it's going to pick up at 0.5, um, and it ends at 1.5. Uh, because keep in mind, uh, she did go for one hour, um, but one hour from my starting point uh, is going to have to end at one and a half. So... That's our one hour, and now we're ready to uh, come up with our last um, uh, time interval. Do you, are you thinking about how it picks up where the other one left off? And then where's it going to end? Again, she ran for a half an hour. So one half hour from where I started is going to end me at two. Uh, that is two hours. Now you can see here that I was careful with my equal to signs. Uh, notice I'm only using the equal to signs on one of the numbers. Uh, technically, you can't use it on both. Now, let's graph this before we try to write it. See what I'm doing here? We're gonna graph this before we try to write it, just to help you to continue to kind of get a handle on what it is that we actually know. And uh, what we know is that uh, the, the starting spot clearly has to be zero, um, that is for distance, and if she swam for a half uh, uh, an hour, uh, that's definitely gonna take us to 0.5, but she only swam uh, a half uh, of a mile. So I wanna make sure that my Y value here is only at a half. And as we often do, we want to label that point just so we know what we know. 
So when x is equal to 0 0.5, that is when the time was 0.5, her distance was also 0.5. That is the, the y value. Now, next, she biked. She biked. Well, she biked for how long? She biked for one hour. So we're going to get ourselves to one and a half. But she went an additional 12 miles. In other words, 12 miles from where she left off. So she's not at 12, but rather she's at 12 and a half. Do you see how I'm picking a point up here that represents her total distance? Again, she's at uh, uh, one and a half as far as time is concerned, but she's at 12 and a half as far as distance is concerned. And again, that's like the total distance. So what we want to kind of see here is that this piecewise function is actually uh, adding up uh, her total distance. As we get to the last situation here, it's uh, a half an hour more, so it's going to take us to two hours. And she ran three miles more. Now, three miles more is three miles from where we left off, so that's going to get us to 15 and a half. 15 and a half, if you're careful with our scale here, uh, should be this point up here. Technically, the point two, 15 and a half. And we have our last piece. Now, it's an interesting graph. It shows you uh, the, distance of the distance that she's traveled. Uh, it also shows the times, but it also shows the slopes. Do you agree? The slope of each one of these lines is actually the, the rate. Uh, so just for example, uh, we have the line that has the smallest slope. Of course, that was the smallest rate. It was one mile an hour. Um, we, we have the, the steepest slope. Uh, again, it's the steepest slope, which is the, the fastest rate. That was 12 miles an hour. And of course, for our last one, uh, it was uh, six miles an hour. She was running pretty fast. Uh, but I, I like how you can see the slopes um, based on, of course, uh, just the look of each of those graphs. Let's write the, the uh, piecewise function for distance. That's really what this is. It's not y equals, but it's distance equals. And we're ready to come up with each equation. First equation, y equals mx, y equals 1x, mx plus b, plus 0. And as we already figured out, that's for 0 to 0.5 hours. That's going to be our uh, restriction. Um, our second equation, y equals mx, y equals 12x. But let's not be too quick to say plus 0. Uh, it actually doesn't make sense if you think about our red line extending back to the y-axis. It looks like it's actually going to be some type of negative y-intercept. looks like we're going to need to find that y-intercept by doing a little bit of algebra. Now remember, the algebra that you do is you plug in to the y equals mx plus b formula. Notice I'm already plugging in a 12, and now I need a point. See a point? See a point? Yep, it's the point that we already found. 1.5, 12.5. Pretty nice. I can plug that in for y and x and solve for b. Something that we were doing, of course, uh, with um, piecewise functions earlier. Uh, just subtract to 18. That's what this equals. And yeah, you do end up with a negative number. You end up with negative 5.5. So our y-intercept for this equation is negative 5.5. And, of course, our interval is between 0.5 and, let's get rid of some of this here. Our interval is between 0.5 and uh, 1.5. Well, there's one more equation to write. And guess what? I'm going to have you write it. You're going to have to think about the slope. I think we already think thought about that for the green one. And you're going to have to think about the y-intercept. 
Now the y-intercept would be as if this line transferred back to the y-axis. So it's going to be somewhere around here. But we want, I want you to find it. I want you to find it using the algebra. Okay. You're also going to want to put the interval down. This becomes part of your assignment. Um, and uh, the students in the classroom would be doing the same thing. Once you finish this equation, you can have me check it if you would like. And then again, you're going to flip over to the back. And there's two problems to work out. Should do a nice job as we finish up with piecewise functions.